welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope we're all doing really well. Today what we're doing is we're on to the Geelong Cats. So before we do that, if you are new around here, can I just ask you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. It's really good to know that you're enjoying the content. So without any further ado, let's talk about the Cats. <laughs> Twenty twenty then it was fourteen wins and they finished second and it was a bittersweet year for the Cats, it has to be said. It was a tremendous and well drilled regular season, but it kind of came unstuck when you're twenty one points ahead at a quarter in a granny and then you lose to a tenacious tiger side kind of makes all that hard work feel a little bit painful. But the Cats play a brand of footy that is potent. And last year, they, it was on full demonstration. Hawkins was destructive at times, and they really did prove to just outplay sides. And more importantly, their backline does not concede one of the most effective in the comp. But quite often with Geelong, it seems to be a tale of two sides in two parts of the year. They're well-drilled and skill-reliant in the main season, but then it kind of falls apart in finals. Tom Stewart and Co. though were so hard to break down at the back. They've got great ball users down there. Their midfield stood up terrifically as well. Danger, Guthrie and Menegola were an absolute sight to behold. And they tore part, teams apart in the middle. They can hurt sides and have the ability to really attack from all parts of the ground. Although they're disappointed with the outcome, the signs were there after their recruitment in 2020 as well that they're set to go for a big 2021 again. They're putting all the eggs in this finals basket. <laughs> In 2021, it should be an absolute strong year for the Cats, and I have no doubt they'll work back it up. The acquisition of Cameron really fills a seri serious hole, and maybe a question mark at times about the Cats. It always looks like to me that Tom Hawkins needs a foil, and he's now got a former Coleman medalist who were allowed to really stretch them back lines when they play against them. And when we see Hawkins as well last year, not only did he win the Coleman, he also won the goal assist was topping the ladder there and he's got someone now that's going to make it really hard because he reads the play well. There's a lot of talk that they play similarly but I don't see that. I think you'll actually see now Cameron live in the goal square and Hawkins do what he does well. Him as the next kick into the forward 50 works so well for Hawkins and I think if you can get Cameron one out he's very tough to beat. They'll be licking their lips at the prospect of playing them two together. They have a real strong game plan that is really good. Really good at holding possession, playing with pressure and also handling it. I think the acquisition of Higgins as well sprinkles an icing on the cake. People forget that they've got three of the top seven ball users in the comp in danger, Guthrie Menegola. You also add that layer of Mitch Duncan on there and the number two tackler in the comp in Brendan Parfit. They've got all the tools. You add Sean Higgins to that, silky user, knows how to use it, can find the ball as well and knows how to play good, true footy. It's a real good team they built there. Very good, it's ready now, not many weaknesses, going to be tough to beat. Wants to watch then, Jezza Cameron, let's talk about him. Last year wasn't his most ferocious best, but 10.3 touches, 3.9 marks, 1.4 goal, goals and 1.4 tackles. And it may have not been his greatest year last year, but there is no doubt about Jeremy Cameron's class. Once he gets going, he's very tough to beat. He's one of the best forwards in the competition. And I think the freedom he'll get at the Cats and I think the new look and, and change of scenery is really going to be the making of him. He's also got Hawkins next to him now as well, who just finds players with ease. Geelong play a way that kind of puts the team first over the player. I think Cameron suits that because I think they'll use him a lot. He's going to get a lot of cheap goals out the back. And I think for me, pound for pound, he is up there with anyone else in the comp. I think they will play him one out and look to try and isolate him. And that will bring himself into his strengths. He's got a lot of talented players around him. And he's basically swapped one all-star midfield for another one. I expect big things from Jezza Cameron, as do the Cattery fans. And I think you're going to be in for a treat. I can't wait to see him line up round one and watch him play. The other guy we're going to look at is a personal favourite of mine and that is Jordan Clark. Last year he started to show signs and in the preseason we're starting to see it as well. Last year for him 12.7 touches, 4 marks, 3 tackles and 0.3 goals and he's a real jet, a real live wire. He really adds the gloss there in that back line. He's a line breaker, he's a good user, he attacks the game hard, he's a modern day type footballer. He knows one way and that is attack, attack, attack. Very capable with ball in hand, he spots a pass. Loves attacking the corridor. 
He's another silk for Geelong. And they need these players. And people forget as well. People always say Geelong are dad's army. I joke about it as time as well. They've got some talented young footballers coming through. And I'm really excited about seeing this guy develop. He's a superb footballer. Given game time, play him on the wing. I suspect to see him a lot this year. He's an absolute game changer. And the final one is Sam Simpson. 13.9 touches, 2.6 marks, 0.3 goals and 3.1 tackles. And... What I like about this guy is he's something that I don't think the Cats have too much of. He really uses his pressure well. He really puts pressure on the forward line, on the back line, and doesn't allow easy entries. And he's got a little bit of a creative spark about him, and he kind of goes under the radar. Kind of reminds me a lot of Jason Castagna at Richmond. You kind of don't think about him, and then suddenly he hurts you, and you're suddenly like... God, he's good. I expect to really see him get a lot of game time this year. And I think he'll really thrive on having two tolls there as well this year. Two really fearsome tolls as well. Because they'll both create space, Jezza Cameron and Tom Hawkins. They naturally draw defenders to them. And I think Sam Simpson will be one of the guys that really enjoys it. I think his mate as well, Mears, will really get a lot of freedom from them two being there. And I expect to see one of them go off. But I really enjoy Simpson's game. I think he brings a lot of pressure, a lot of intent. And he's an exciting little player to watch. What's the success then? Well, he's got to be being top of the mountain, hasn't it? They've got to win a flag. They definitely have addressed their list. They've looked to back up their strategy that they've had over the last few years, which is make for now. And they've got some quality talent in. They have depth. They've got a good system. And it's proven for the majority of the year. They're always thereabouts at the end of the ladder. I think with the acquisitions, they've got a lot of options for finals. And sometimes I think that's where Geelong come unstuck. You know what you're going to get with Geelong. And I think they've got a lot. I, th I think Higgins is a really understated pickup for them. He adds a bit of gloss, gloss to them. And also Smith, another one as well, looks to direct the ball inside. He's a very early inside 50 enterer. And he also provides a little bit of spark and goals from there. I think they've got a lot more tools this year than they did last year. So I'd expect the Cattery to have a really good year. For me, in the regular season, I expect to see them 1-4. to fourth, And I expect to see them definitely play deep into the finals come the end of September. That's the Cats then. Let me know what you're thinking if you are a Cat fan. And if you are an opposition fan, let me know. Who do you like watching from then? Who are you looking out for? Until next time.